show, our next guest is a two-time Olympic figure skater and Canadian ice dance champion. In November of 2022, just as she was about to compete in one of the biggest figure skating competitions in the world, she received news that changed her life. And in honor of Ovarian Cancer Awareness Day, Piper Gillis has bravely decided to come forward and share her story with the world. To help her do that and speak on the importance of early detection is women's health expert, Dr. Sheila Wajasenga. Welcome the both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, so Piper, I'm gonna start with you. So you noticed that something was not quite right last year, like around October. Tell us mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, I was actually at a skating competition last October in Toronto and finished the program. And I felt like I hadn't eaten in a while. I got weird stomach cramps and kind of felt a little nauseous. Mm -hmm. Finally ate something, didn't happen, like didn't get better. Same thing happened the next day and it kind of continued for the next 10 days. And I actually didn't go into training one day and that usually is normal for me when I have my period, like I get crampy and it's kind of normal and yeah. I skip a day. But the next day my coach was like, you don't look very good. Like maybe you should go to the doctor. And I went home, my husband said the same thing. And I was like, oh man, gotta go to the doctor. And sure enough, he put me in for some tests and a couple days later I had a nine centimeter cyst. Wow. Wow. So you found wow. this out. I mean, that's, uh, you know, life changing. But what's amazing is that you even had symptoms. Like, Dr. Sheila, that's mm -hmm. not very common, correct? That's not very common at all. So I'm so grateful that you're here talking about this because the symptoms of ovarian cancer, often they can you can have no symptoms at the early stages to, to very vague symptoms like abdominal bloating, a bit of cramping, urinary symptoms. And as a result, we don't seek out care. And as a result, also, doctors don't always recognize it as something potentially more sinister. And so often, 75% of ovarian cancer is actually diagnosed in the late stage, mm. which means that the prognosis is much worse. Mm. So it's so important to talk about this because mm. we don't actually have a screening test for ovarian cancer like we do for breast cancer, cervical cancer, colorectal cancer. And so by recognizing your symptoms early and getting the help like you did, Piper, and so it's so great that you're here talking about it, so thank you for doing that because it'll raise awareness for so many people to think about if they should get care or not. Wow. Oh, so Piper, you were then referred to a gynecologist. You went through a battery of tests. Can yep. you tell us what happened at that point? Yeah, after the first ultrasound, they referred me to a gynecologist. I did a little bit more of intensive um, ultrasound, blood work, and then a couple days later, I got an email from one of the portals and I had a little hazard sign next to my blood work and it was right next to the cancer antigen and I was way out of normal range. And instantly I started to freak out a little bit because both my husband and myself have had um, parents who passed away from cancer. So we mm. instantly freaked out, got a hold of the doctor and they reassured me that, you know, this, this may not be cancer. It could just be your body telling you something's not supposed to be there. And, you know, so I was going into another competition, trying to put that down was really, really hard, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad I actually had those conversations with her before because it was a lot to take in. Really hard to take in. All right, so on yeah. December 19th, you went in for surgery to have those cysts removed and the doctors um, wanted to determine if it was benign or malignant. A month mm -hmm. later, you find out that it is cancer. Yep. They also, when in that surgery, they removed some lymph nodes around your appendix. Mm -hmm. You had a competition that you missed and decided not to tell anyone. Okay. Why did you make that decision? I felt like... My partner, Paul, and I were having such a successful year, and mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to come back for the World Championships because we had a, a chance at winning our first world title, and um, I just didn't want to put that extra pressure. And I also really hadn't digest, digested the word cancer, and I just felt like that was just too much to put on. And, and if we were successful, I didn't want it to be like, oh, well, she had cancer before. You know, I didn't want mm -hmm. people to keep like asking me that question. And then at Worlds, I felt like people were like, well, how is your appendix? Like, are you feeling okay? They were saying, my, you know, I've had family that have gone through that. And I just felt like I was kind of lying to them. And I felt like, you know, May 8th, it being World Ovarian Cancer, felt like the perfect day to kind of speak up and have a voice. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did. Um, you know, your story is amazing. Um, I also have a personal connection. Um, I lost my maternal grandmother to ovarian cancer. Um, and my mother is one of five sisters, and every single one of them have had hysterectomies, full hysterectomies. Oh, okay. So um, it's, it's big, but of course, my mind as the daughter in this lineage, I've got to ask you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sheila, um, is ovarian cancer hereditary? So it's a very important question to ask yourself and know your risk factors, and one of them is genetics. So 10 to 12 percent of ovarian cancer is passed on from family members. And specifically, the genetics 
that we know about the most are BRCA1 and 2, and some syndromes like Lynch syndrome. Those are cancer syndromes that we know if you carry that in your family or if other members of your family have breast, colorectal cancer, there can be an increased risk of ovarian cancer as well. The reason why that's important is that because we don't have a screening test for ovarian cancer, we do have genetic testing that can be done. And so if you know your history, you can come see us and we can make sure that we refer you for genetics to see if we can monitor you in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sheila, you know, you obviously commend it. It's amazing what Piper has done mm -hmm. advocating for herself and speaking about this and drawing attention to this. Um, you know, what are some steps also that women watching at home can do to sort of advocate for themselves if they aren't sure where to start with their health care provider? So I think the first thing is because ovarian cancer does present very, with very vague symptoms, mm -hmm. knowledge is power. And knowledge mm -hmm. is power in the form of knowing your body. So, Piper, you had awareness that something was off. And often we actually ignore our reproductive organs and the symptoms that come with that. So we're told that periods are irregular, that's normal, other things are normal, but they're not. So seek out care, get that support, know your risks, and ask and talk about it like we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be the best thing for us all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And having the conversation is so important. So I have to ask Piper, how are you feeling today? I feel great, I feel relieved, I, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm skating again full time. I'm on a tour with Stars on Ice, which is what I love to do. So I do have some things that I have to think about for my future. I have to go in for regular testing. I do have endometriosis, which is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also wanting to plan a family. So there's a lot of steps that I have to take next, but right now I'm just focusing on being happy and healthy and just enjoying life again. Good for you. Good. And we're so happy you're here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sheila, thank you for the information as well. Um, unbelievable. We are going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back right after this. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.